I'm Terry Jo Bichel. I am a neuroscientist and uh, the mother of a 22 year old son with Angelman syndrome. So we thank you for joining us today. This is a wonderful opportunity for the two foundations that provide support and service to the entire Angelman syndrome community. They're sitting down and answering some of your frequently asked questions tonight. We're pleased to introduce Amanda Moore, CEO and Kyle Rooney, board chair from the ASF, the Angelman Center Foundation, and Allison Barrent, chief science officer and John Schluter, board chair of FAST or Foundation for Angelman Syndrome Therapeutics. We hope our discussion today provides clarity on each foundation's primary focus, mission, and how they collaborate together to benefit children living with Angelman Syndrome and their families. So please introduce yourself. I will call on you, I think one by one, that makes it easier and tell us a little bit about your background with your respective foundations. So we'll start with Amanda. I always get to go first because of my name, I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, thank you guys. Thank you, Terry Jo, for having us tonight. And I just wanna thank Allison and John and Kyle for being on. I feel like this is a really wonderful and beautiful moment. I'm very excited to be here. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Amanda Moore. Um, I am from Indianapolis, Indiana, and um, I have a, a beautiful husband, Adam, and two wonderful kids, twin boys, Jackson and Baden, and Jackson, who has Angelman Syndrome. Um, our, you know, journey with the Angelman Syndrome Foundation started, I think, maybe a week after we got our diagnosis. Um, we got our diagnosis January of 2018, um, and I remember after, obviously, spending some time grieving, um, thinking I can't just sit around, I've got to do something. And I'm sure that's, a, that echoes a lot of what my um, other amazing parents on, on, uh, on the call tonight do. I just needed to do something. So I reached out to the Angelman Syndrome Foundation and said, what can I do? This is my background. This is what I, you know, I could provide. And, um, two weeks later, I was a board member at the ASF. So, um, I was on the board for about a year and a half before I, um, uh, was honored to be asked to step into the role of the CEO. So that's kind of my, you know, my, my journey with the Angelman Syndrome Foundation. We're still very new into the diagnosis I consider myself. Um, Jackson, Jackson was diagnosed close to two and a half and he's six now. Um, so I'm, you know, blessed by this community and just really honored to be here tonight with um, each of you. So that's a little bit about me. Kyle Rooney, for those that don't know me and uh, hello everybody. What an exciting evening. So um, so excited for tonight, um, tell you a little bit about myself. So I live in Minneapolis. I'm a division manager for a medical device company. My, uh, my wife works for Best Buy. We have four little ones, fraternal twins that are eight, uh, Declan, Typical, and Madden, our angel, and then six-year-old Conrad and two-year-old two Evelyn, who is uh, probably the hardest work of all of them. <laughs> Find them all, and this little girl just keeps us running. So. She's fun though. Um, I've been on the board since 2017. Uh, it's been a, a great journey. Um, it all started after the diagnosis. Um, I was doing a, a fundraiser and a little bit about the fundraiser. So it, everyone's journey after the diagnosis is a little bit different, right? Um, my journey, I, I just, when I was given that diagnosis, when I had the twins, right? And so we got it early because we had the control and then we had Madden who was just falling behind. And so we took him in and, and, and long story short, I mean, we got the diagnosis and, and when given that diagnosis, you just, for me, I just felt helpless, right? Powerless, it was, it was obviously a challenging time, um, like we've all felt. And, and I really didn't know what to do. I didn't even know how to tell all my friends and family. And uh, it, was a, it was a challenging, really challenging time. So it's like to do a fundraiser, fundraiser for a lot of reasons. One, I wanted to empower myself and try to pull myself out of this funk and also the opportunity to, to tell everybody um, you know, how uh, you know, Madden's diagnosis of this rare genetic syndrome I'd never heard of. Um, so, so, so we did the fundraiser, um, we did another fundraiser, and I met ASF uh, through that. Um, I was so lucky that they asked me to come on board, and um, of course I accepted that. And, uh, and I'm excited for tonight too, and uh, I'm excited for exploring where together we can accomplish more. Um, 
I certainly think we all agree on our on, on our ultimate goal. Um, we're all taking a little bit different route to get there, but uh, tonight's about figuring out the best way there to reduce some of those redundancies to to figure out um, you know how to get there the fastest way possible. So really excited about tonight and. Uh, Thanks for being here. Um, well, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to be here tonight. And Kyle and Amanda, um, being able to do this with the ASF is really a great honor. And, you know, I think both of us have, all, all of us have, have been through this for some years, Terry Joe, more than the rest of us. And, um, you know, this is really a moment that we should be excited about because I think it's time that we all acknowledge how far we've come in, in, in such a, a, a long yet short period of time. And, and I'm really proud of everything we've all done. Um, and so certainly I want to start with that. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Allison Brent, and I'm lucky enough to serve as the Chief, Chief Science Officer for FAST, the Foundation for Angelman Syndrome Therapeutics. Um, I am the mother to three beautiful little girls. Um, my oldest daughter is Kai, my middle daughter is Quincy, and my youngest daughter is Piper. Um, Quincy, who's now seven, she lives with Angelman Syndrome, and, and we live in New York City. And um, just for those of you who don't know a little bit about me and my relationship with Terry Joe, Terry Joe got me through probably the first year of my diagnosis. And we decided to name Piper Piper Joe um, because Terry Joe made our lives bearable to understand that we can get through this with grace because she got through it with grace. And so she really was a very important role in our lives. And so I just thought that would be appropriate to share with the community. Um, that Terry Joe has had an impact in probably all of our lives on this call. So, so thank you for that. Um, but I am. I got to just say thank you for that. That well, is it's true. amazing. It's true. She has beautiful children and lives a, the most beautiful life. And, and we felt that, you know what, we can do this too. And we can have three kids because to us, that seemed in New York City in a tiny apartment, the closest thing to impossible, but it too <laughs> was possible. And now we have a beautiful little paper. Um, who now is five. And so, um, so ultimately my, my journey, um, I was humbled to, to join the Board of FAST in um, 2016, well, late 2015. And then I started off as the a scientific director. And in 2016, I became the chief science officer. Um, I'm a veterinarian by training. I'm an internist and an interventionalist. Um, and I mainly focus on clinical trials in animals with naturally occurring diseases. And I, I develop medical devices to essentially solve medical problems where standard treatments fail um, and it leads to a huge clinical unmet need. So I've spent my really whole, my whole career taking proof of concept and advancing that into various types of clinical applications, running dozens of clinical trials and trying to solve like unsolvable problems. And so when Quincy was diagnosed at five and a half months of age, I felt like she was an unsolved problem, to be honest. And so I was diving into all the science and all the research and all the medical advances. And I was blown away by the amazing science that had been done um, through the incredible work of all of our brilliant researchers. Um, and this was all done certainly well before my time. So I felt really lucky that so much work had been done and I was really lucky enough to understand the science. And so my first reaction was I needed to talk to every single scientist that ever published a paper to really figure out what was the potential therapeutics for Angelman syndrome? I solved problems and I needed to help try to solve this problem. And so I learned very early on in my personal career, um, it was always a motto my husband and I said, where that things were either possible or impossible and there was no in between. And so I knew after talking to so many of these scientists that curing Angelman syndrome was certainly possible. And if I could expedite that, and if I can help that, happen in Quincy's lifetime, then I needed to do that. So it was very clear to me that I had a skill set and I wanted to use that skill set to help FAST and help the community to better translate this amazing research, help to take this proof of concept in the cell lines and in animal models and to help bring that forward for human application. And so this was my wheelhouse. This is where I, I had my strengths. So um, really the definition of translational research is exactly this, which is fast main focus. And so I really felt like I fit that role quite well. And so essentially um, fast does try to spend every day doing exactly that, translating research, taking incredible collaborations, having a deep understanding of the science and the clinical needs of the community and readying that and expediting that toward transformative treatments for individuals around the world living with AS. And so really my career set me up to say that this is a role that I could help the community in order to accelerate translational research. And so that brought me to FAST. What an honor to be with four people, all four of you that have done so much 
for our community. Th uh, thank you, Terry Jo. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is John Schlater, and I'm the board chair at FAST. Uh, my wife, Bethany, and I live in Milwaukee, and we're blessed with five children, Jack, Grace, Max, Ella, and our three-year-old, Sarah. It's, it's Grace that brought us to the, this community. Grace was diagnosed with Angelman syndrome when she was 18 months old. A few months later, believe it or not, the first conference I was at was an ASF conference in Chicago. Uh, my wife and I, Bethany and I learned so much at that conference. And actually we found our Grace's neurologist uh, at that conference. Through some friends in the community, we were led over to the FAST organization. And I've been fortunate, well, I have been fortunate to serve on several uh, high performing nonprofit boards, but the, the vision of the FAST board is just really unrivaled. It is, it's brought so much hope for Grace's future when previously we just, we, we had none really. Uh, every family living with Angelman syndrome deserves to have that same hope. And it's, it's fast goal to, to, bring that, to bring that reality to every family living with Angelman syndrome. I'm dying to hear more about the foundations. And uh, they were founded. Both the foundations were founded with different approaches. And that kind of has led over the years to the foundations having different core functions. But both of them are necessary to really cover all the needs of the Angelman community. So I would like it if you all could explain a little bit more and give us a little more clarity on the core differences. Well, thank you. I, I love answering this question. I think I've got it down to like a really good elevator speech when people ask me what, what the, <sighs> and the mission and the, the, the core functions are of the, the foundation. I think the one I should lift up and make sure to always talk about the fact that you're correct. These, these foundations were created by very passionate families um, and they continue to be um, grown and evolving and changing by passionate families. Like it's unbelievable to see what, what when you get a group of moms and dads and grandparents and siblings together who have individuals with AS, what they can do. And so, you know, our focus at the, the foundation is to really so support individuals with um, Angelman syndrome and their caregivers from diagnosis till hopefully one day treatment, cure, and even beyond. Uh, we co focus on three different pillars. We really focus on family support. How can we support you day to day in the journey that you're discovering and you're going through right now? Whether that's through educational webinars, whether it's through counseling support, whether it's through the family fund, whatever we can think of, we tend to try to, to holistically think on a daily basis, what is missing? What is the gaps of service when it comes to support and how can we fill that? And then secondly, our second pillar is we really um, are the, the individuals in the board before me had the forethought of thinking, how can we lift up and build a clinic network that will one, create clinicians that really understand Angelman syndrome and provide excellent clinical care for individuals with AS, but also how can we prepare a network for when we get into these exciting trials that we have places yeah. that where these trials can happen and that the people who are running the trials understand and know Angelman syndrome. And so we really focus on the, the clinic network. We, um, we went from eight to 20 last year. So we have 20 clinics in the United States for internationally. There's multiple clinics across uh, in, uh, around the world as well. Um, there's a lot of actual uh, clinics that are serving individuals with Angelman syndrome. But we really focus on you know, how can we clinically support people right now and get the best clinic care but also prepare, um, you know, and work with pharma when we move into clinical trials. And then, we, you know, for, for since with the beginning, um, research has been a priority as well. Our research is um, very different from what FAST funds, which I think is, is makes it everything so beautiful. Like it works out so perfectly that the areas that we're not able to fund, FAST is able to fund. And the areas that we really focus on are you know clinically what can we look at? Uh, we just funded uh, two great research uh, research 
opportunities to look at symptoms, like how can we treat some of these things that are really frustrating for our families, whether it's, you know, shaking and tremors, whether it's um, gastro issues, whatever it may be, funding that, and then really funding research around what are still the things that we need to learn about Angelman syndrome. Um, it, you know, there's still a lot that we want to learn, and so we fund a lot of real basic research to help, you know, help us understand that and help people maybe even kick off their research, you know, their research career around Angelman syndrome, like how can we give pilot funding to where then they can move on and get larger funding from groups like FAST and other organizations to be able to move on, move forward with their research. So when I talk about Angelman syndrome foundation, that's kind of how I, I put it out there. We try to holistically support people um, the best that we possibly can um, through the through their journey. Allison, how about uh, can you tell us what the difference between that and what FAST does? Absolutely. Well, I, I think you you stated it really well, Amanda, and and I appreciate that that overview. For FAST, at least, we have one focus: is to cure Angelman syndrome, and and we do that through pursuing and accelerating translational research initiatives and. Um, really what we're trying to do is bring meaningful treatments to all individuals living with Angelman syndrome and to our mission, regardless of age or regardless of genotype. And so simply put, essentially, we robustly fund numerous, very large proof of concept therapeutic programs. And we translate each of these different strategies. Um, and right now we're funding nine main strategies from animal and cell models. So that proof of concept and that preclinical discovery work all the way through to human application. So that valley of death where a lot of academic research that's very promising gets lost because it doesn't go from that academic into the industry hands, we fund the entire um, essentially life cycle of that drug development. And so this is a long and expensive process that requires a ton of due diligence and, and, and a lot of expertise and, and consultants and, and really bringing in people from all different areas, from industry and regulatory to basic science and clinical science. And we bring in these world-renowned experts um, to the table in order to ensure that we're pursuing every safe and effective option for those of, of our loved ones living with Angelman syndrome. And so Really, that means we take all of these preclinical and early academic studies that have been conducted or that haven't yet been conducted, but we have some concept where it could be beneficial for Angelman syndrome. And then we analyze those results, navigate a roadmap to human candidates so we can have a human drug product with our pharmaceutical and academic partners. And then we figure out how to build that path forward for human clinical trials that will ultimately fill this mission, which is that transformative and meaningful therapeutics will be seen by all of those living with Angelman syndrome, again, regardless of their age or regardless of their genotype. So we do our best to ensure that we are diverse enough because different therapeutic strategies might benefit different people at different ages or different genotypes. And so we really strive very hard to not leave any stone unturned and ensure that every therapeutic opportunity is fully pursued. And we do that through the life cycle of different therapeutic platforms and different drug candidates. ASF and FAST are collaborating, and I know you are collaborating on many initiatives. I mean, even the interviews I've been able to do the last couple months of researchers and scientists and clinicians, that's a collaborative effort. Um, can you share with us some of the other programs that the ASF and FAST are already collaborating on? Absolutely. Um, FAST and ASF, uh, it, especially of late, have been working much, much more closely together, trying to make sure that the, the needs for the entire community are, are met. Um, both organizations are heavily involved in patient advocacy, policy making. Um, we, we're working together in ABOM. ABOM is the Angelman Syndrome Biomarker and Outcome Consortium, started back in 2016. Um, FAST and the ASF are working together on the Angelman Natural History Study. Um, and we're also working together as spearheading an economic impact study for Angelman syndrome. And maybe the one I'm most excited about is the newborn screening tool for Angelman syndrome. I, um, the, this tool is going to be just game changing for, for new parents 
speeding therapies for the youngest, the youngest kids living with Angelman syndrome. On to ABOM, since it was something that you led and um, we're very thankful for Allison's leadership on that. I, I would add, you know, a couple of things that we have been working on and I'm incredibly excited as well with some of those initiatives. And I think we're gonna talk a little bit about them later, but I think the important thing moving forward is the, the idea of collaboration is, is so crucial for our community. There are so many Angelman syndrome um, organizations in the world working towards supporting individuals with Angelman syndrome everywhere. So how can we all make sure that we are coming together and working um, together as much as we can and collaborating when it when it makes sense and when it's in really important for our community. And so to see these two organizations come together makes total sense, right? I mean, it makes total sense for what we're doing. So I think that some of the things that we're doing now are going to be really great um, foundations to lead as we, uh, you know, as we move forward and hopefully be able to do more collaborations working together um, in the future. So I'm excited about both of those initiatives as well. Tell us a little bit about the highlights, the most recent highlights um, coming from your own foundation. Yeah, I'll, I'll highlight four of them. Amanda touched on, on, on a couple of them, so I'll just give you the 30,000 foot view. Um, number one, the ASF counseling program, a really exciting program. It's a free service to all AS families. This program was created to support families that are struggling um, and just in need of an ear, you know, as, and uh, we know how difficult it can be and challenging and stressful and isolating to be a caregiver. caregiver. So um, we have that program for them. Uh, started in April, and uh, just in a short time period, we've served 167 individuals, so we're very proud of that. Uh, second initiative that I wanted to touch on, the ASF Family Fund. Uh, we've served over 185 families since it started in 2020. The ASF Family Fund is created to provide financial assistance to families supporting individuals with AS. Uh, family members can apply for funds that are needed to improve the quality of life for any individuals. Uh, it's been cool to watch. I mean, beds to bikes, um, you name it. If, it, uh, if it's going to improve the quality of life of, uh, of a child or a person with AS, um, this fund has been able to help. So it's been really exciting. Um, number three, expanding the clinical network from eight to 20 clinics uh, to serve more families. And more importantly, just to to, to make it easier for families to get to some of these clinics, right? Um, if, there's, if there's one thing that can be a challenge, it's um, you, you get the diagnosis, you want to go see specialists, and you find out you're a great distance from, from one of these clinics. So standing at 20 is something we're certainly proud of, and we're looking to continue to do that as well. So uh, we'll also be working to invest more in this network. And as we move into more clinical trials, um, and more of that will come in the next coming days, but that'll be an exciting um, update on how we're going to use some of the data that's collected in some of these clinics. Um, the fourth thing, uh, we continue to fund more research around symptoms. Obviously, symptoms are challenging for our families, um, and our goal is to find treatments and therapeutics that will help improve the quality of life for those living with AS. Um, we're proud of the contribution we've made in the research space, and I think we can all agree that there's, there's just never enough. Um, so we'll continue to uh, look for ways to, to fund more research as well. So those are just uh, for, the, for the new initiatives that, um, that we've, we've gotten off the ground over the last year. Can you also uh, tell us what the new highlights are of the things that FAST has been up to? I could take that one. So I, I think it's fair to say that um, FAST has worked incredibly diligently and we stay you know, laser focused on our mission, which is to bring meaningful treatments to every single human living with AS, um, again, regardless of their age or regardless of their genotype. And we, we focus on that very clearly. Um, we've invested over $24 million just in this type of translational research alone. And this is the, the type of, um, of focus that we have. And we're always looking for opportunities to collaborate with the global community in both um, Angelman syndrome and other neurodevelopmental disorders in order to learn from others and expedite the process toward our mission, which is to cure AS. And so whatever we can learn from others, um, other experts in the field all across the globe, we, we do our best to ensure that we don't leave a stone unturned in, in any way. And I would say a couple of things that, um, that we can focus on and one very, very recent um, advance that has really turned turned out well for the entire AS community, um, in my eyes certainly, was that in early 2021, uh, FAST launched the InSync 
a partnership, which is the International Angelman Syndrome Research Council. And this is in partnership with Safari or the Simons Foundation Autism Research Initiative. And we spent um, a day, and, and this will be something that goes on annually, and it could even be more than that. We spent a day with some of the most amazing think tank of scientists, industry, business development experts, regulatory experts, clinicians, all from around the globe, both focused on Angelman syndrome and non-Angelman syndrome disorders in order to learn from others. And this effort, um, again, was supported by Safari and FAST, and we were able to discuss and evaluate all of the research in initiatives in Angelman syndrome, both past, present, and future initiatives. And this really helped us to grow the translational research roadmap for AS. And that was really exciting for us because it allowed us to figure out where the gaps are and to really understand what gaps in the, the life cycle of drug development for Angelman syndrome needed to be filled. Again, with the, the primary goal is to bring therapeutics to humans with Angelman syndrome and not get stuck in the mouse with Angelman syndrome. Genetics Biotherapeutics, which was you know, really founded initially by FAST. Um, and this is a biotech company that is singularly focused on developing an antisense oligonucleotide for Angelman syndrome. And this was the first disease modifying therapy that actually reached the clinic for humans in Angelman syndrome. And, and this study really taught the entire community so much and really has served as an example of pushing the envelope to move the needle toward potentially very meaningful therapeutics. And the hope for the future of those living with AS, um, with the work being done by over now 24 pharmaceutical companies working in the space, working on Angelman syndrome therapeutics is tremendous. And honestly, when I talk about that, it, it certainly does give me chills to realize where we started, where there was one pharmaceutical company interested in AS when, when Quincy was diagnosed, to the fact that we're having conversations with 24 pharmaceutical companies who are heavily invested in Angelman syndrome. And we play a big role in helping all of them accelerate their drug development platforms. We've also created a really strong infrastructure. Um, the Angelman Syndrome Infrastructure Grant at, at University of California, Davis, has really been a great collaboration between numerous academic and industry partners, as well as pharmaceutical companies, so that you know, we can really ensure that we have very highly regarded animal neurobehaviorists, molecular biologists, and, and epigeneticists even, who are very involved in evaluating proof of concept studies for dozens of potential therapeutic candidates from every different type of pharmaceutical company, biotech company, or just an academic who has a great idea but doesn't really understand the animal model, doesn't understand the cell lines or the organoids and, and how to really best test these drugs in those models. So this program has really enabled so many collaborators and pharma partners to have access to all of these experts and all of the animal models and cell lines, as well as a full biorepository of tissues and fluids so that so many different therapeutics can be de-risked in the hands of those that know how to work with these animal models and truly be able to tell if a drug has promise for humans with Angelman syndrome or not. And so that has been really helpful. And we've really brought so many more of our pharma partners to the table because of this infrastructure, which, which um, that was only launched about 18 months ago. So I'm, I'm really proud, quite proud of that. And if I were to just say one more, I, I think what I would say is that um, I'm, I'm super excited about the Angelman Syndrome Biomarker and Outcome Measure Consortium. That was launched by both the ASF and FAST in 2016. And Terry Joe led the way with that program for a couple of years, which, which was really incredible. And ultimately, we've been able to accelerate the funding to the ABOM. And FAST invested a million dollars this year alone just to be able to accelerate um, the development of endpoints, so biomarkers and outcome measures specifically for Angelman syndrome, which has really helped all the pharmaceutical companies in this space in a pre competitive way, in a very transparent way, working on AS to have access to, to the most appropriate and the most sensitive endpoints, honestly, in order to measure meaningful change. Um, meaningful change is what's most important in clinical trials. If we can't measure the change, then ultimately the change doesn't matter. So it's really important we understand how to measure meaningful change in this population to have the most sensitive measures. And ultimately that's what helps to drive clinical trial success. And so the ABOM has been really focused on being able to do that and FAST has been able to play a, a really big role in that. So that's been a really exciting time. And lastly, I'll just acknowledge that we're a global community. So um, in the last 18 months or so, FAST now has seven global um, FAST organizations around the world. And we're really proud of this entire global community because we're really coming together in order to accelerate and advance natural history studies, clinical trials, and, and making sure that we have the right endpoints for each language in each culture in each you know, part of the world so that we can make sure that you know, therapeutics don't only reach the United States, but they 
they also reach all over the world and that we're here to support all of our parents and all of our families and all of the patients around the world living with Angelman syndrome. And so now I want to know if you all can tell me uh, about any of the upcoming collaborative efforts that are that are about to happen. John touched on on the the two that are the most exciting, I think, that we have. And I'll maybe talk about one and let Allison talk about the other. Um, the, the one that I'm most excited about um, is probably the work we're doing with the advocacy group. I think, you know, we at the ASF had been working on advocacy for a while with a group of very dedicated parents and, and having FAST come to the table and, and join those efforts to be, to be one voice, which is really important when it comes to advocacy, right? You don't want multiple voices, multiple organizations um, approaching um, different di different individuals. It just becomes your your voice becomes uh, muted if you're not you know working together as one. So we know that when these um, these therapeutics come down the, the pipeline, that we we also know there's going to be a cost to these. And so we're working now on how do we put together a burden of a burden of the disease um, report to where. When it does come down to it, we can really have a tool that will be able to help us advocate to insurance, Medicaid, and other individuals to be able to cover the cost of these treatments. It's in, it's incredibly important, and we know it's going to be a hurdle that we're going to have to face. And we we uh, acknowledge that that is there, and we acknowledge we need to face that now. So we've got a first draft done. So we're excited that that will hopefully be done soon and ready for peer review, so we can get get that out. And then we'll continue to work together as a community to push that agenda because it's going to be really important that we are able to provide access to these treatments to anyone, no matter what, you know, no matter where, no matter what, no matter what, uh, you know, statue of life, whatever it may be that anyone has access to these, these um, treatments. And then Allison, if you want to talk about the newborn screening yeah. effort, that'd be great. To further your comment there, Amanda, I fully, I fully agree with you. I mean, it's been, it's been a really fun collaboration and really, you know, the economic burden of disease is so important and patient access is our number one priority. So we can develop therapeutics all day and spend $25, $50 million on the most, you know, elegant therapeutics. But if patients don't have access to them, then it just doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately it's our, it's our job as the organizations and the voice of the community together to ensure that we push patient access at every level, global patient access, regardless of your age, regardless of your genotype, that we ensure that we can work through policy, through government policy, through insurance companies, and um, you know all the different regulatory agencies around the world, because every country is going to have different requirements on what's going to allow for patient access and pricing. And so it's our job as the foundation to do our best to ensure that we support that from a policy perspective, so that we can do, you know, do our best to get as many patients access as possible, and not just in the United States, but all over the world. And so we've been working together on that, which I think is really, really important. And that leads to the newborn screen, right? Newborn children, we want them to have access. And the only way to get on the newborn screen is to have a diagnostic test that's accurate, that's sensitive, you know, that can really be able to detect the disease early on when they're born. And so it's very unique on how a newborn screen can get approved. And unfortunately, it's a very, very expensive and very complicated process. Process. And you really cannot get on the newborn screen until you have an approved drug. And so if you don't get on the newborn screen, you can't catch the kids very early. But if you don't have an approved drug, you can't get on the newborn screen. So it's really a vicious cycle. So we've been working together um, with the Angelman Center Foundation, as well as the other chromosome 15 disorders. And we've been working to help accelerate the blood spot so that it can be part of the newborn screen and, and really prove that we have a sensitive and effective test. If we can prove that we have a test that has a very high sensitivity and specificity, meaning that the test is reliable and the test can really detect patients that have the disease at birth, then once there's an approved drug, any drug for any of the chromosome 15 disorders. So we can leverage all of the excellent work being done with, by the Prader Willi organizations and by Duke 15Q and whoever of the three of us have an approved drug first, all of us would then be able to get on the newborn screen. So we're really leveraging each other in order to lift each other up and to try to bring ourselves forward. I have a feeling um, that we'll have an approved drug for Angelman syndrome, probably one of the first. And so we may be leading everybody else, but that's okay. We're here to help everybody. But we know that if we have it ready to go, as soon as we have an approved drug, 
hopefully we can start the policy and, and the, um, the lobbying to get it in every state on every newborn screen so patients have access as early as possible in life. And if we can get it at newborn, that would be the holy grail for us. So now just a couple more questions. One is if you can sum up what is the vision for the two organizations and how do you want people to really understand the focus of each? Sure, I mean, when I think of these two organizations and Kyle, I'm sorry, I'll let you jump in. When I think of these two organizations, I think of it about it very simply. I mean, we really, what we're doing together kind of fits every, hopefully every need of the community from the time you're diagnosed to the day-to-day -day journeys, to getting your support clinically, to, you know, even, even, you know, Alice and I have talk, talked before, like, you know, ASF is getting the clinics ready so we can take the work that we're doing in the translational research and pass it on to the clinics. And then it, it's kind of just a beautiful, like, it, it, it's almost like if we had a, like a little diagram, right, to show like it, it's a, a perfect circle of partnership of life, right, of how this works. So in my opinion, it's necessary, the, the work that both organizations are doing, it's not duplicative. And, you know, the, our goal moving forward is that we continue in that, right, that we work together when um, it is important for the community. And when it makes sense for us to do so, we collaborate, we don't duplicate efforts. And we move together, to, you know, as you know, we're serving one community, and we're not serving different communities. This is Angelman syndrome is one community. And so we're serving one. So that's kind of how I, I envision us moving forward. Kyle, I don't know if you want to add to that. I was just gonna say, you know, I'm on the board, but I'm also a parent, right? Yeah. And so before joining the board, and I was doing research, and I, I didn't understand, I'm like, I, I didn't understand the two groups. And I think that's pretty common, right? You get this diagnosis, and you're like, well, this is so rare. And there's two organizations. So it took some time to understand which organization does what. And I think that was, you know, further defined today. And I think what we're trying to do is close that gap, close that loop, right? Where can we help each other? Um, you know, where can we be more efficient? What resources can we share? That's my two cents. That's why I'm here tonight. That's why we're all here tonight. And um, I, I'm so happy that we're having this conversation. I really, really look forward to the future together. So that's all I'd say. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and thank you for that. I, I think if I can jump in, I, I think that both organizations are here for, for similar goals um, to improve the lives of all individuals living with AS, period. Yeah. Both, you know, both organizations, FAST and the ASF accomplished this goal through, you know, different yet very synergistic mechanisms and, and funding strategies. FAST is focused on accelerating and funding the life cycle of transformative therapeutics or treatments for all individuals living with AS for those who want it. Um, and, and taking that proof of concept and bringing it through the life cycle of drug development in order to be able to bring it to the Angelman syndrome clinics so that clin pharmaceutical companies have access to the best doctors and the best clinical trialists to run these trials so that we can actually prove if these drugs work. Because if they work, our children will have a better life and not everyone may want a treatment for their child and that's okay. But our focus, our goal is for those that, not only for those that do, we also focus on those that don't, but to be able to provide options for those that do. And at the end of the day, I think about every night when I come home and every morning when I wake up, that's one more day that I'm not speaking to Quincy. Mm -hmm that I'm not hearing her voice, that we're not having a conversation, right? Of, of course, we speak to each other in our own ways, but I wanna have a conversation with her. I want her to speak to me. And every day that this isn't cured, every day that a therapeutic is farther from her is another day that we're not having that conversation. And, and you know, that's a, a perspective one of our board members said, and I it, it just speaks so deeply to me. And so whether that is accomplished through pharmaceutical company A, pharmaceutical company Z, a combination of four of them, initiatives by the ASF or initiatives by FAST, likely it's all of them. And to me, if we can get there faster, better, safer together, then we accomplished what we're all here for for me to have a conversation with my daughter, for you to have a conversation with your daughter or your son, and for everyone living with Angelman syndrome to feel that they're living the best life, whatever that is, whatever feels good for that family and for that child. And that's all we're here to do. For me, this is not competition. For me, this is all about making a better life for our kids. And if, if our North Star is our child, 
or all of the children around us, we're always going to do the right thing. And so every decision we make is with that in mind, then I have no question that together we're going to get this done much, much better than ever doing it alone. And we all have such an important role in that because getting to that goal requires a village. It doesn't require one small group. And it's not even just these two organizations, right? There's international organizations, there's other neurodevelopmental disorder organizations that we're gonna learn from and we're gonna advance our programs because of them. And so we really need to utilize that in my mind for every child with Angelman syndrome, which is our focus. But when we are done and Angelman syndrome is cured, when our tagline is cured Angelman syndrome now, not cure Angelman syndrome now, then we can go and work on the next neurodevelopmental disorder because we're not done. There's a lot out there that need a lot of what, what's been accomplished and, and what's yet to be accomplished. And so for me, we're in this together and, and there's a lot to do. But... This has been an amazing and wonderful uh, conversation. It makes me so happy for me in all these 22 years since my son's been born, it's always been about keeping eyes on the prize, have the kids be the most important thing. It, that is what guides you to always do the right thing. And we need all hands on deck. If we're going to get this done, we need each other. All of us need each other. So um, I'm, I'm really happy about tonight. So I'm, I'm grateful to, for all these collaborative efforts that you've all been talking about. Uh, uh, we're all grateful to the whole AS community for your time today, listening and learning about the two foundations and how they can work together and what they're already doing on their own. And um, we're looking forward to hearing more. It would be great if we could do this kind of thing, maybe on a regular basis, maybe every six months and hear what the different foundations are doing and what they're doing together and apart. It's just really, really fantastic. So thank you from me and thank you on behalf of all our kids and uh, don't stop.